Hey guys, Josh the RV Nerd here, Halo Dirt. Well, I'm actually from my house right now. Just got off the treadmill and I was just kind of cruising through all the uh, YouTube comments and questions that you folks leave me. And I had one of those moments where I realized you can't see the forest from the trees sometimes. When you do something for a living and you gain a level of proficiency with it, I think you start to take things for granted. And there's a fella who comments on a lot of these videos. His screen handle is a guy in his computer. And he knows his stuff. He knows his stuff well. He goes camping. He's done his research. Uh, he works at a, uh, you know, used auto type place. He gets it, you know. he That air quote gets it, that he gets it. But despite getting it, as I've so eloquently described, he really didn't realize that there were certain do's and don'ts with a basic weight distribution set, a basic aspect of camping that you use every single time you tow a travel trailer, more than likely. And I thought, you know what? Uh, maybe I'm not doing my job by breaking down something like that. I need to educate people better on this, because even a person who really knows what they're talking about didn't know that. So I wanted to take a minute to talk about weight distribution kits, what they do, why you have them. Um, basically, the, the way you want to look at this, <laughs> pardon my ultra low-tech ghetto video here, but I think you'll get the idea. I'm at home. I don't have resources in the office, so this will suffice. So obviously, we've got the trailer tongue here. This is the insert that goes into your vehicle. So the shank, the head, the bars, and the saddles. That's your weight distribution kit. Now, this is a Husky Centerline TS. I wanted to use this system for demonstrational purposes because this is our number one most popular hitch at our store. Is straight up and down gets the job done. It gets the job done well. The, there's a couple reasons I like it. I didn't really intend to get you know get into selling this, but I you know it, it helps to explain why I guess. Um, first of all, it's weight distribution and anti sway built into one system. There's no separate sway bar. You can see how this this tongue here obviously had a little sway bar bracket in it from those holes. This system is weight distribution and sway. Secondly, you don't have to get out of your vehicle and disengage it to back up or to do hairpin turns since there's no friction sway bar here that you run the risk of damaging. Now, more to the point, what it is, what it does, and what you gotta be careful for. That's really what this is all about. So, your trailer has tongue weight. As the weight of the trailer pushes down, it's gonna try to squat the vehicle. But what this system does is when this pushes down, it'll cause that bar to sort of rotate in a sense, and it'll try to push back up. It, the, the weight that the trailer's putting on the vehicle, some of it gets distributed back over here. Um, where, what this helps with is like a lot of times you'll see some things, um, hitch weight or pin weight or whatever phrasing you wanna use, what this does is it lets you get like an extra, depending on who you talk to and the type of system you have, like 10 to 15% more tongue or pin weight. Because a lot of these things you look at, you say, well, my truck can tow 12,000 pounds, but I don't have that kind of tongue weight that I can work with. I've only got like a 750 pound tongue weight. This is how you get to that. When you see these trucks that say they tow 10,000 pounds, read the fine print. It says, with class four hitching system. See, most trucks that are going to use something like this have a class three hitch. That's the first type of hitch where you see the, the two inch square receiver on the back of it. You see some heavy duty like three quarter and one ton trucks, they say like class four hitch. Well, a class four hitch has one of these essentially built into the vehicle. It's an internal class four hitch. This quite literally is an external class four hitch upgrade. You put it into a class three hitch to bulk it up to the level of a class four hitch. Um, when do you want to use one of these? With very few exceptions, pretty much any time you're towing any travel trailer, with very few exceptions. Unless your vehicle is just so drastically capable of outperforming the trailer that you don't need it, uh, even then it still can't hurt. Now the do's and the don'ts. What people don't realize is these things are not all interchangeable. You can't just buy any one of these out of the box and slap it against any trailer. You have to get the right one for the right thing. You have to have all the right junk in all the right places. Um, these There are different sets of these bars. The head, the shank, this stuff doesn't change, but the bars, see, these are all pre-cambered to specific weight ranges. They usually go in like 2,000 pound capacities, so like two to four, four to six, six to eight, etc. You get the idea. Um, if you have a 3,000 pound trailer, 
you don't want to get a hitch that says it's rated for 10 to 12k i see people do that they're like well i just bought the big one because i'm an american and i'm pretty sure that bigger is better you know because we're all we're all trained to think the bigger is better right i mean that makes sense um you know more bacon is better than less bacon no one's gonna argue about this anyway um <laughs> bacon um the thing is if these bars are too strong for the job you're putting in front of them, meaning if they're rated for more weight than the trailer has, then you can actually torque this tongue so hard that you can buckle the tongue, you can bend it backwards, you can twist it, and if it's not heavy enough, if you have an 8,000 pound trailer and you have your grandpa's old 4,000 pound set, then it's not actually distributing the weight like it's supposed to and you're going to get a really floaty, bouncy experience in the back end. So the thing you also have to look out for is people are going to be inclined to look at the dry weight of the trailer they want to purchase and um, they're going to want to find a weight distribution set that goes with that. When in reality, through a lot of practice, what we found is you actually want to look at a weight distribution set that more closely lines up with your GVW, your max dry weight plus max cargo weight because that better reflects, and don't get me wrong, the, the chances of you actually loading something up to reach your GVW are slim to none, and slim just left the building. But uh, you want more of a real world scenario. Plus, uh, you want to be able to have that extra uh, distribution here for when you are bouncing over speed bumps and railroad tracks. You ever pull into a campground with a smooth driveway? <laughs> me either. <laughs> they don't exist. Even the ones that are paved have speed bumps. Um, so find, a, uh, find the GVW of the trailer you want match this up with that. Now if you're purchasing from our store, we do that for you since we have all those stats on hand. Um, these bars, the heavier bars actually don't cost any more, any less weight than the cheaper bars. Um, so a lot of times, provided we have the parts in stock, we can actually just swap the bars out with people if you're upgrading or downsizing a trailer. You know, that's another thing if someone's had, there's a huge downsize movement in the business right now. So someone uh, might be looking at like a 10,000 pound trailer or that they've been towing and they want to go down to like a 4,000 pound. Well, you need a new set, frankly. You don't want to use the same one. Well, I meant for this to be like a three minute video and we're going on seven and a half minutes, but I, I think that there's definitely some good information here for people that just really didn't realize. Um, as always, these videos are here just to give you a brief overview, a glimpse, and to spark ideas. As always, form your own opinions. This is just mine. Some little nerd sitting in his house in southern Michigan. But, you know, use your heads, do some research, and don't take my word for it. Do some looking around. I think you're going to find that we know what we're talking about, and that's why we sell so many trailers and we have so many happy people. So, take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone.